Josh Manson, it's good to see you again, my friend. Welcome back to Sports Spectrum. Thank you. It's great to be back. It's good to see you as well. Yeah, two years in the making. We sat in these chairs or some semblance of these chairs two years ago. Uh, you were fresh off of winning a Stanley Cup and uh, a lot of exciting times, a fun summer in 2022. Let's start there. Let's go back um, to, because I think you hadn't had your day with the cup yet the last time we had you on. And, uh, and we're certainly going to dive into faith and, and some things, the highs and the lows. But take, take us through what your day was like and, and what you had, what your experience is like with that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I think it's every hockey player's dream, um, <laughs> you know, to win the Stanley Cup. And then the second part of that is to be able to share it with all your friends and family, right? To have that day, that 24 hours that you get. Uh, and it is, I mean, for, for me, I mean, some, I think some of the captains and stuff, they get it maybe a little bit longer, but for me, it was 24 hours and like at midnight it is, it's gone. So it's, they arrive at your house at midnight with the cup? Uh, no, well, they come when, when you want them to come. Okay. So I said, you know, okay, come six thirty or seven, whatever it was. So we we'll, we'll be up having coffee. And yeah. then from there, it's like the whole day. And then we were sitting around the campfire, um, you know, 11 o'clock, 1150. It was like a hey, 10 minute warning. Uh, and the guy's there, right? There's like a hockey yeah. Stanley Cup gatekeeper that's like with you the whole time. With yeah, the yeah. So there's a couple of the guys, um, okay. and they'll travel around with it. There's usually there's two of them that go kind of. Um, I think they take different sections yeah. um, as the, as it makes the rounds. And um, yeah, our two guys were they were awesome. And actually, one of them was was a believer. His name was Howie. He was he was great. So I got to chat with him a little bit about faith. Um, nice. And he was I still kind of have his contacts. So that's good. He was great. But yeah, it was um, it was an amazing day, and we got to share it with um, some of the people in the city. Um, some of the younger minor hockey players, you know, I thought that'd be important. In what city? Uh, my hometown, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Yes, yes. In Canada. Yeah. Yes, in Canada, okay. yeah. I like uh, it. So we, we took it there, uh, had everybody, you know, the minor hockey kids. I wanted them to see the cup, kind of see what they're working towards. I thought that was important. You know, that's something that when I was young, I would have loved to, to see. Yeah. Um, and then we brought it back to my house, my cabin, or my parents' cabin, sorry. Mm -hmm. And we had it there, had big dinner, all that stuff. And then we went to uh, kind of a follow-up after thing for, for more people who all couldn't kind of fit at the, the cabin, our cabins. It's a good size and there's a good size beach, but there wasn't enough for, you know, a couple hundred people. So we that, went to a second area and, yeah. and had fun. And then we closed it all down with a nice campfire. And that was kind of, I think, one of my favorite parts was mm. just sitting around the campfire with kind of my, my closest friends and family um, yeah. and just kind of taking a second to take a breath because everything everybody ever told me was oh man by the end of the day you're gassed you just kind of want to get rid of it uh <laughs> it's it's such a long and you know exhausting day um so i really wanted to make sure i took a second to kind of like take it all in you know and, and that yeah. was important i still am thankful i did that that's good um so do you get like a minute miniature version of the cup does each player on the team get like a mini trophy or even maybe a larger trophy to keep with i know you get the ring obviously but do you get like a replica version of the cup yeah you get like a little a little trophy i mean you can't see my hand size right now yeah. or yours but but you were right it's about like that big yeah it's about the size of like uh, maybe a sneaker and a half i don't know a yeah. shoe and a half yeah. or something like that size yeah, yeah it's about that size um little it just it's a actually it's an awesome little keepsake to have and, and you can mm -hmm. throw it on your shelf or whatever mine's still in the box because we're in a rental house so i don't know really know what to do with it so i can <laughs> want to just keep it protected for right now you know the kids yeah. keep them away from it but um it's it's actually awesome because my my older daughter she's four and now she kind of understands and uh this year she was telling me i want a stanley cup i want another stanley cup and i was like oh my gosh no pressure but yeah no pressure um but then i, I brought that out and she saw it and she was like whoa this is cool this is the stanley cup because it kind of yeah. looks like what's in the pictures and so you get I, rings too right like so was there a ring ceremony presumably that you guys had yeah we yeah. did it uh it was the next season the beginning of the season we all met um beforehand okay and it was what was that like Oh man, it was awesome. They yeah. did such a good job with it. They made like a production and, um, I think there's probably videos on YouTube of it, but yeah, yeah, they had like the boxes and you lift the boxes up and they had, they had the moment we won playing and like the announcer, uh, Connor McGahee, he was like the, he's the play by play guy, uh, radio guy. And he was, he was saying his piece, you know, and it was dubbed over the video and oh, it, was, it was special. I still get goosebumps when I think about it. That's cool. How often do you wear the ring? When do you take it out? Or never. Never. <laughs> never. I never got it in like it. a safe somewhere or something? I, I probably, well, I'm not going to disclose where I keep this, but uh, no, it's, it's not in a safe. I should, I should maybe have it in a safe, but um, no, I just keep it somewhere where if people come over and, and they haven't seen it yet, then I can just pop it out and show them. And yeah. um, 
but yeah, I, I kind of keep it under wraps, and I don't. I'm not definitely don't have it out all the time. That's smart. I would say that's smart. Yeah. But something that'll be a good keepsake, and certainly as opportunities come to speak and share and meet with, you know, young people, you'll be able to kind of show that ring off a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think when I'm older, you know, like the old guy that's telling stories yeah. from back in my day, I want a Stanley <laughs> Cup, and here's the proof. That's what your dad does now, right? Like <laughs> back in my day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he never won, unfortunately, but yeah, I think he has the uh, the war wounds to prove his career for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah he the played, tax it took on him. He played a long time. Time, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then the season happens in 2022 <laughs> into 2023, and it doesn't go the way you want it. Like, you don't play a lot. I think how many games did you get in? 22, 23, did I read? Yeah, I think it was somewhere in the 27 20s. 27 games. Yeah. yeah. And so that's not what you're hoping for coming off of the highest of highs. Talk about your faith and managing the – the expectations, you know, or the, I guess the excitement of winning a Stanley Cup and then the next year you're just battling some injuries and it's not, not going the same way you had the year before. Yeah, it was, it was difficult because I, coming off that, the, the Cup winning season, you know, I got traded at the deadline. So I was only there for the last portion of the season, really. And then we won, which was amazing. So I was kind of coming off that high, re-signed in the summer, you know, looking forward to getting a, a full season under my belt in Colorado, kind of, you know, keeping that momentum rolling from the from the prior. Yeah. And uh, started off, you know, I thought I was I was playing well. Started off, uh, I think I played like 20, 20 games maybe. Mm. And then end of November, I, I tore my uh, ab, my uh, yeah, sports hernia, both sides. Sounds painful. It, you know what? It, it was, was it really painful. It was kind of painful. Yeah. I, I've definitely had worse. It was more just annoying because you couldn't move the way you wanted to. It wasn't like a constant aching pain, you know, like some other things. Um, but it just, you couldn't skate. It's a hard movement if you're for a hockey player. You know, you yeah. can't move like that. You can't put that stress. You know, you're you're slipping, you're on skates, and it's, you got to try and hold everything together. And, and there's just nothing there. It doesn't, you know? So that was really frustrating. And I rehabbed it, rehabbed it, rehabbed it, thinking I could come back. Um, and I did. It took about three months, and I felt good. Yeah. Um, and then I want to say, like, it was the third or fourth game I felt it go a little bit. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's just the, you know, scar tissue, whatever. I'll keep kind of pushing, pushing, pushing. And then two games later, just it went again. Ugh. And so then the rehab process started all over again. I think I played, like, four games, five games, whatever it was. And came back right for the first game of playoffs. You know, I think it was maybe a little sooner than I should have came back. Um, and I... Tried playing again. I think I got through three games, and I, I tore my uh, QL just because everything was so off. Just mm. my body was just not in a good spot, and so I had another injury. And I pl I tried to play. I think I played one game, and then I tried to play another game, and it just it wasn't. I couldn't move, so I had to call that, and we ended up losing in the first round. And it was just really deflating because I really felt like we had it. Well, I got another good team. You know, we were burdened kind of by injuries all year, and myself, I was out for most of the season and most of the playoffs and I couldn't really help my team in a, in a season where yeah. I think we had really high expectations again following the cup win. Yeah. And so spiritually, how are you dealing with this? How are you managing this? And I'm sure maybe there were other times out throughout your career where there were highs and lows, but how are you managing this now in the different phase of your career than you were maybe when you were younger, just coming up and dealing with injuries and certainly experiencing success and then exp I wouldn't call it failure, but experiencing a really, really low low moment how are you kind of managing that from a from a spiritual perspective like are you questioning god are you you know is the trust there where you're like all right this is just part of the deal whatever whatever you throw at me lord i, I trust you yeah i think i think i was definitely frustrated i mean it, it's i wish i could say oh it didn't bother me at all i know you know where my identity lies and and it didn't bother me one bit and i, I do know where my identity lies and it's not in hockey as a hockey player you know i'm a I'm a servant of the Lord and, um, you know, a follower of Christ first and foremost. But, you know, I, I do enjoy playing hockey and I do believe that God gave me the gifts and abilities to play hockey. So when I'm injured, I can't do those things. And so I was, I was a little bit frustrated. And uh, I think what more got to me, you know, I, I, I was in my Bible during that time and I was, I was praying, you know, for recovery and repair. And I know I had a lot of people praying for me um, and I was just trying to stay in the word and keep me uplifted. Cause usually I'm pretty good at rolling through those things. I, I understand it's kind of a part of the journey of a hockey career Sure. Um, and any sports really. I mean, it kind of, everybody will battle with injuries, but when I got hurt again, 
then I was really kind of struggling a little bit with, with the, the why God, you know, I've, I've been through this, I've been hurt. I've, I've battled through kind of like that low and, and worked hard to get through it and climb the mountain and then be back playing again. And then it's like less than two weeks later, bang, I'm right back where I was before. And it's, that's, I think that's when things can get really tough is like, you go, you go down and you go up and then you're right back down where you were after all that hard work, you know, three months. And so it was, I think it was more difficult the second time. And I had to really focus on just kind of releasing the, I guess the anxiety or stress that comes with being injured and being away from your team hmm. um, and kind of giving it up to God and, and just trusting. And I, I kept on saying this because this was something that I think we spoke about last time, but trusting in his process, his plan for my life, um, yeah. because I didn't expect to get traded in 21 and I did. And that led me to a Stanley cup, which I would never have expected, you know, midway through the year that year. So I had to kind of lean back on that and go, okay, well, this is the lows now, you know, again, and I got to just trust in you and see where this goes. Um, and I did. And then I came back for playoffs and I got hurt again. And I was like, woof, this is, <laughs> things are getting really tough. And I feel like I'm getting beaten down a little bit. So I had to, and it was like a constant reminder to just keep leaning in, keep leaning in, keep leaning in and not getting away from it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do feel like I did a, a pretty decent job at that, of staying in the word and trying to keep my mind focused on, on him through it all. And, um, you know, glory to God, I came back this season and, and, um, yeah. after surgery, I finally got surgery that summer. Um, or after that playoffs, we lost out, I got surgery and I played, uh, my ab did not bother me this year. Um, and I played about, I think it was 76 games. And 76 I missed, of 82. Yeah. Which is, you know, for myself is, is really good. And I was definitely, I wanted to play 82, but I think only missing six, I, I was really proud of that accomplishment. I was very thankful. Um, to God for keeping me me healthy through that and you know strengthening my ab. Yeah, Josh Manson's with us here on Sports Spectrum. Um, I wanted to ask you about your mom, and I know we talked about this beforehand. So I hope people understand, like I'm not just pulling this out um, and being insensitive here. Um, but you shared your story and your testimony previously on the show, and I know your mom had a big part of that. And you also shared with me that you had lost your mom. And I was just wondering, whatever you're comfortable sharing, if you could share whatever happened in terms of the situation, but just how much um, going through that, you know, what was the, what was that process like in grieving and, and trusting in God? Because initially, maybe you want to rehash the story of even coming to your faith real quick, but like initially that's what kind of led you to the Lord. And, and now you're kind of in a different um, on the big end of that, on the back end of that, on a different time frame here um, in losing her. Can you kind of share kind of some of those thoughts and um, just kind of how you walked through that? Uh, for sure. Yeah. So real quick, I mean, I was, I was um, not in the church, not a believer. I didn't know anything about, about Christianity or God or Jesus or anything. Yeah. And um, that, I'm not sure when that was, maybe 20, 16, I think. And then my mom got di my diagnosed with stage four melanoma. Um, it had mm -hmm. metastasized from her original diagnosis. Um, she, I prayed to God, got fell down on my knees in the middle of the night, you know, after struggling for about a week of just, you know, emotions and all the things a normal younger kid would go through. I think I was 24 or something, yeah. um, would go through in that time. And he, a miracle drug. My mom tried a miracle drug and it gave her life again. It essentially healed her within the first treatment of four treatments. And it was a, it was a complete miracle. And I was very thankful for that. I kind of forgot my, my promise to God. Oh, my promise to God on my knees was that, you know, heal my mom and, and I'll follow you yeah. for, for my life. And I'll, you know, be thankful and, and praise you and all that. And, uh, and I'd forgotten that promise. And then I met my wife. My wife was a Christian. I didn't know. Um, I knew I loved her. And she just said, you got to come to church. And that was kind of the first step in this journey of my walk of faith. Yeah. And I remembered my promise to God and gave my life to Jesus. And um, we kind of been working on my faith ever since, been a work in progress ever for since. Sure. Yeah. And so anyways, so yeah, so she was diagnosed with stage four melanoma. Um, and we got, we got seven years of just miraculous life out of her where she was able to see me get married. Um, have grandkids or have my kids, uh, you know, grandkids, but she was a grandma, which was something really important to her. Yeah. And see me with the Stanley cup. I mean, all three things that I prayed for things that I had really affected me and weighed on me back when with her, we heard her original diagnosis. And so it was the end of the, actually the end of that season to kind of continue 
um, after we lost out in the playoffs, after I tore my QL, yeah. it was probably the, the two weeks leading before that. Um, we had we had known that my mom's health was kind of declining, and there were signs that something was going on in her brain. Um, and there had been signs, I think about a year and a half beforehand, where she had to re-up her drug, her dose again, and it went away. Mm. But now it was back quicker. Now it was, you know, the first one was five years, it lasted. This one was about a year and a half. And now it was back. And we kind of knew, I think, in the back of our minds that this was not going to be, not going to be good. Yeah. Um, and so I was kind of battling with that through the injuries. So that was kind of another thing where I was like, why God, why yeah. is this happening? Um, why now, you know? Um, and I, and I wrestled with it a lot during the playoffs and I think it was a bit of a blessing that we did lose. I never want to lose, but it was a bit of a blessing because I ended up getting to spend time with my mom. I wasn't mm. focused on hockey. Yeah. Um, I was able to spend time with her and she ended up passing away in August. So we lost out, uh, of 2023 a year ago, 2023. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 2023. Yeah. So we, we lost out. And then two months later, um, she was, she was gone. It, it happened fairly quickly. She battled really, really hard. Um, and it was just the final bit of cancer that we couldn't, you know, the drugs just didn't work anymore for her. Yeah. And so I kind of battled that through the summer after getting surgery and wondering why. And I just felt like the hits kept coming. It was just one after the other, after the other. And I, after this really successful, uplifting season of my life where everything was going the right way, it felt like we had a kid, healthy baby. Um, we had the cup. Uh, we had, you know, new contract. We got baptized um, yeah. at PAO. Um, and just all these amazing things were happening. And then it was just like injury, 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 mom's diagnosis. Um, and then to add on top of all this, while we went home from, to, to see my mom, it was almost like it was, it was like a crazy dream. But my, we found out my grandpa was diagnosed with melanoma as well, my mom's dad. Mm. And so after, it was a month after she passed away, he passed away too. So it was like another hit and wow. another hit. Yeah. And I was really struggling in my faith, uh, if, to be honest, because... Yeah. It was really hard to to understand why I think, and I and I talked to a lot of people about it, and a lot of people sent me scripture, and, and that did help. You know, it is reassuring. I think when you when you do read the Bible and and spend time in the Word, you can be reassured in in a lot of things in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, I wish I had all the the verses that were sent to me offhand, but um, sure. But I think they they're they're very common verses for for people who struggle with loss. Yeah. Um, but I, I wrestled with it a lot with, with how am I going to get through this? Where, why is this happening to me? Um, it, it just kind of selfish, I guess it was. And, and, and I still don't think Jason, I could give you a good answer and tell you a good, a good place or how I've come through it. I, I still don't know if I'm completely through it. I don't think I'll ever get over the loss of my mom or understand why. Sure. Um, that's definitely a question that I think I'll probably have when I, when I get there. Yeah. Um, you can ask Jesus yourself. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. but I do know that I've come to terms with it a lot more and trusting if I'm going to trust in his plan in the times of getting traded and trust, trust in his plan in the times of, of injury and trust in, in his plan of, you know, pregnancy or all these things that you go through in life. I have to trust in his plan in this um, just because it seems more substantial to me. doesn't mean it's not a part of his plan. Yeah. And that's, that was kind of a, a bit of an eye opener for me. Grief. First of all, thank you for sharing that. Um, grief's weird, isn't mm -hmm. it? Like it's just weird. And it's different for everybody. And you, you want to, you want to try and follow the blueprint when something's going to happen. You're like, all right, what's the process here? Let me follow step one, step two, step three. And I'm going to make, and then you realize there's just no blueprint. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's way of grieving is different. Um, I don't know, man. I just, it's, it's a weird stage. I, I'm imagining your wife was probably very helpful. Um, and just being a rock for you, certainly, um, she's always that way. We've met Julie and love Julie, but just through this process, I would imagine she played a big part in helping you walk through it. She did for sure. I yeah. mean, I, I think it's tough when you when you lose a parent or a loved one or somebody that close. Um, there's there's not many words you can say really, um, especially early on, 
that help. I think what you need, or at least what I learned, what I needed was, was somebody there and somebody there all the time, because you don't know when the grief is going to strike you. Um, I, I kept telling people afterwards, uh, that it's like a roller coaster. It's, you're good for at the beginning, like you're good for six hours and then it hits you and you are in it for a little bit. And then yeah. you come out of it and you're good for 12 hours and then you're good for 24 hours. And then next thing you know, like, okay, I've gone a week and you have another breakdown and then you're good for two weeks. And it, and it just kind of felt like it went like that and it would come and go like a roller coaster, the ups and downs, but having her there, um, kind of at all times so she could check on me you know, and she would constantly, she's, you know, credit to her. She, she was really good with checking in. Um, how are you doing today? How's it going? Um, yeah. you know, and, and telling, and you know what, telling me too, like I miss her today. Um, I, I, this reminded me of her today. Um, we made my mom's, this was special, but she would make my mom's cookies. Like the first four months we were in Denver for the season, she made cookies, my mom's fit recipe that I loved. And so I, that's ate, a, cool. I ate a lot of cookies for the first oh, four I months. Bet. Maybe that's yeah. why you played so many games last year. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Eh? Forget diets yeah, for forget cookies. Diets. And that's, that's the secret to mom's health. cookies. That's the way to go. Yeah. Um, and it, what's really interesting to me is you actually had a season that you talked about where you played 76 games. How, I mean, people don't talk a lot about the mental side of, of sports and of athletes trying to process like a long season, staying healthy, um, staying present in the moment, being the best that you can be for your teammates, also growing as a man of God and all that, but also going through life and grieving. I mean, you're, you're turning around fairly quickly here because it was August. You said your grandpa was pretty soon after that and the season's there. So what was that like from that perspective? Because like you said, by the grace of God, he allowed you to have a pretty good year last year, uh, last season. But at the same time, I'm sure you were going through it sometimes too and just being a human being. I was, yeah. And, and so when we went to my mom's funeral, um, I kind of knew that was going to be the last time that I would see my grandpa because he his health was in decline um, mm. rapidly. So that was, that was the last time I saw my grandpa. And last time I was in Prince Albert, I left for the season, um, started training again. I had to go right back into training and get my mind kind of back and focused on hockey, but I still had that, that hurt in my heart, um, you yeah. know, through all those things, through the move back to Denver and through the training camp and start of the season. And, and so that was, that was really tough kind of getting things back on the rails, I guess. And, and then going on the road, being in the room and, and feeling that hurt, um, at random times and, and, you know, not wanting to, to lay it on my teammates, you know, not having my wife around to, to be there for me. Um, and just kind of, finding that, that rhythm, I guess, of, of the season, like you say, and just kind of, uh, cause the season is a struggle. It's, it's a long, it's long, yeah, it's a long <laughs> physical, mental grind. Yeah. And to start it off on that note of just kind of being down, um, it, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting too. thinking through, I was looking at your, at your stats, like a major, you made your NHL debut October 31st, 2014. So it's Halloween. Mm -hmm. And and we're about to hit October 31st, 2024 soon. Is that kind of weird to think 10 Oof. years yeah. ago you made your NHL debut? Yeah, really weird. And then to think about where God has you now, like you were a much different person back then. Oh my gosh, completely different person. Yeah. Yeah, completely different. If, if 2014, I made the NHL and I was standing there looking around, I was thinking of all the great things that I did to get myself there. <laughs> and I, I was thinking about, you know, all the people that helped me and there was no thought of, wow, God really was instrumental in my life and laying a pathway to get to me, get me to this point. Yeah. What's your favorite memory from that game though? Do you have something uh, that stands out? Yeah. Well, there's two things. The one was, one was just the anthem. I love. I always loved the anthems when I was younger, watching my dad play. So standing on the bench and seeing the jersey and the logo and the anthem going around the fans in Dallas. That's where where it was. Mm -hmm. But second, and this was probably more more prominent. But my best friend from New York, one of my best friends, he flew last minute from New York to Dallas and stayed with uh, one of his friends for the night and nice. came to the game. And he stood for warmups. He stood right at the tunnel where you come out in Dallas and right as I walked by, he was videoing and screaming my name and like cheering me on, you know, it wasn't I, a surprise. Like you knew he was going to be there. I knew he was coming. I didn't expect him to be at the tunnel screaming my name. Wow. <laughs> I, I figured he could pull an act like that, but, um, <laughs> but no, that was really special. And that had and to I break still, the ice a little bit. Cause you're probably amped up and a little nervous too, yeah, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And he still sends me the video of it and it, you know, we laugh and that's cool. Um, usually on the, you know, around Halloween, he'll send it to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. That was special. And, and my mom, 
it was it was unfortunate, but my mom and my grandpa actually wow, yeah, my mom and my grandpa, they flew to Chicago, which was my first call up. And I didn't play because I was just a backup kind of essentially. And then we went to St. Louis and they followed us to St. Louis thinking, okay, maybe he'll play tonight. And I didn't play. Oh. And then a guy got hurt that game and the coach told me after the game, you're playing in Dallas. And they had already flown back to um, Saskatchewan. So wow. they didn't see me play in Dallas. So okay. yeah, my buddy came last minute. But I'm sure yeah. they saw you got to play quite a few games though, which is kind of oh, cool. Yeah. Making yeah. it for a full circle on the conversation. For sure. Having. Yeah. That's good. Real quick, um, time with the Lord, Bible studies, uh, now that you've been rooted in Denver for a couple years, what's that been like for you? Spiritual leaders, um, you're one of them, but just being poured into having some people kind of help you walk with Jesus as a hockey player. What's that look like for the last few years in Denver? Well, I think, well, first of all, I'm really lucky because my my in-laws are, you know, really strong uh, believers and they are always, you know, open and able to have those conversations and answer any questions that I would ever have. Uh, I always think of myself as, as a work in progress. I definitely don't have all the answers. I don't speak um, Christianese, Christianese. If, you, if you will. I don't speak it well enough or as well as I could. Yeah. Um, but but they, they definitely can. And so I, any questions I have, they're great. They're great resources for me. I'm very lucky and very blessed in that regard. But in Denver, once we got established, um, Marlon Wells, our chaplain, reached out to me and said, hey, would you want to, you know, get things going again? And I said, of course. Um, so working with him, um, bringing guys in, trying the best we can, trying to get a chapel going. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky Steve Stenstrom lives close. Um, so we've been down there for dinner and, and you mm -hmm. know, that's a, a great time to whenever you're in their house, you just feel like you're getting filled up. Um, yeah, I've been time. there many times. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's awesome. I'll just yeah, say that. Yeah, they're yeah. great. They're great people. Steve is so. our boss for people listening. He's the sports spectrum president <laughs> and uh, and PAO is president and a big spiritual leader for all of us in yeah. this room, to be yeah. honest. Yes, so, he is. Yeah. yeah, so they're they're great. Him and Lori have been great. Um, and then, you know what, just all the people that we meet at PAO. Mm. Um, that will reach out through the year or you see them on the road. Other players, really, you know, you talk to them throughout the year, doing Bible studies with other players in the league. Um, That's something you've been doing? You've been doing Bible yeah, studies with yeah, other players in the league? Yes. That's really cool. Yeah, we have a little a little group. I think it was organized by uh, Ryan Carpenter and James Reimer and uh, yeah. Jacob Slavin. And, um, you know, I was a little in on it myself. Um, and just a good way to communicate with guys throughout the, throughout the year. Um, yeah. They've done a great job with it, and um, doing little little studies through whatever whatever it may be, podcasts and stuff. So, That's cool. Yeah, there's different different ways um, that all kind of got started. I guess connected with th from PAO. That's awesome. But you still want to take them out on the ice. Like if if Reimer's in goal, you're, you want to score one on him. And if you know Jacob Slavin's there, and you can get a shot on him. You're going to get a shot on him, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. What, I don't <laughs> Maybe know it's slave. like, God loves you, and then come here, let me help you up. You're going to get a shot on him, right? <laughs> yeah. I think we'll just say I definitely want to win every time. Every time I play, good it doesn't answer. matter who I'm playing, I definitely want to win. That's yeah. a good answer, yeah. uh, Josh Manson. Well, listen, best of luck this season uh, upcoming. Um, thanks for sharing so much of what you shared, and uh, I think a lot of people will – will relate to it because we all go through stuff like it's that's the one thing that kept going through my mind when you were sharing was it's your personal story but you're not the only one going through loss and all of us have in, in this room quite frankly and so um i just appreciate you sharing and being open and uh we're always cheering you on buddy i appreciate that yeah. thank you all right Hey, thanks for watching Sports Spectrum here on YouTube. You can click our next video or you can check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.